I feel like often sometimes we limit ourselves as adults, but also children sometimes of how big they can dream. And in both of my books, I just want um, the children to take away from them the opportunity that they can really chase after their dreams. So I'm just hoping that educators and parents both can just sit down, have those meaningful conversations, and maybe even reflect themselves and be like, well, why haven't I written the book? Or why haven't I gone back to college or run the 5K? Like, I really hope it just sparks um, and ignites other people to chase after their dreams. Welcome to the award-winning Authors Show, where we guide professionals in crafting a lasting legacy through the art of self-publishing. We help you remove self-doubt from your mind with our proven process to become a published author. We have helped authors all over the world to publish their books since 2002. I'm your host, Lisa Yamina, CEO of Halo Publishing International. If you're ready to become an award-winning author, let's get started. Today, I have a very, very special author with me. She didn't publish one book, she published two. And I think there's more. So Maria Lee Antonio, thanks for joining us here on my podcast. I just want to spend some time with you today, okay? All right, I'm excited to be here. Good, good. Well, let's start with some good questions. I know a lot of people say, how did you do it? What motivated you? One of the things I do want to ask you is that, like, what was it that you said to yourself, like, mm, I got to get this on paper and I got to get it out. I want to spread spread the word. I want to amplify my voice on this. What was it for you? Yeah, there's a lot of children's books out there. I mean, we've heard of so many from Dr. Seuss to The Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar. Um, I think for me, when I first started my writing journey, I knew I wanted my books to have positive messages to them. Um, both of my books actually focus on perseverance and the values that each child can take their life into their own hands. Um, so my goal is really just to inspire children. I wanted them to be able to pick up a book, read a good story, get involved in it, and walk away feeling inspired. Well, I think that's that's really important because... Like we all have a calling in life. And I think with a writer, it's it's pretty profound because it's probably one of the biggest things as far as a life accomplishment of doing um, is achieving that goal and making a legacy out of the work. One of the other things that I love about you is that not only did you write the books, what are you doing with it? Are you going out into the schools? What are you, what are you doing to, to get the word out? Yes. Yeah, so I've actually developed a whole school program around both of my books and I've been in multiple school districts. Um, usually I do a read a lot of my book and interactive um, Q&A. Um, I have an activity that the children get to do. Um, you know, I'm selling on all different platforms, um, just spreading those messages, hoping that people are um, even adults are getting these messages of just inspiration and hope, um, but definitely getting into the community, things from craft fairs to school programs to you know, posting on my Facebook page. Um, the biggest thing I want people is just to see that I'm an author and to hear my messages. Awesome. Awesome. And then, and then I want to just make a note of it too. She's, she's written two books she keeps talking about, but these are the two books. If Dreams Could Fly and Feel Day with You, Jane. And I just love that you've encompassed so many things in, in, inside your stories as far as dealing with different issues children's children have um, in school, you know, in out of school. So I think that's what connects me to you as well is that, you know, we have a responsibility as an author to, to teach, educate, not like you said, not only the, the children, but parents and teachers and anyone that can be affected by the message. Right. And Absolutely. So tell me about, um, it's a story that or you could share a story or an experience that you had that affirmed that, wow, this is the path that you definitely need to be on as an author. Definitely. I remember all the way back to elementary school, um, I just had a great passion for writing. I absolutely loved to write. Um, and I had an aspiration to be a teacher as well. And I um, have pursued that. Um, and at the time of my first book, I was actually in college um, studying a degree in special education. And I remember sitting one day and act of God or whatever it may have been, I was sitting there and this idea came into my head and I was like, it'd be really cool to write a book that inspires kids to embrace their differences and just to be unique and know that they authentically can be themselves. And so I th sat there and I was like, hmm, I wonder if I could start writing a book. And I kind of just started jotting down some ideas and I'm like, maybe this could be something. 
Um, and just a few weeks prior to that, I had saw that somebody had used your guys' company and I was like, maybe this is a sign, like maybe I should just take the leap. And I got to talk with you. And I think just from that moment, I was like, wow, this is a real possibility. And once I got working with the Halo team, it was just so easy and so smooth. And from there, I'm like, this message is one that I want everybody to hear. And the same thing with my second book. I'm like, this came to me. I need to just have the world see it. No, I think literally you wrote these things in like five minutes. You're so talented. <laughs> you. not, you're the second meeting we had for the second book. You're like, here's what I wrote. And, and I know it wasn't five minutes, but it just, it just, this is what I'm saying when some people say to themselves, what should I do? What should I do? You know, there's so many affirmations. Like if you can pen a story, you know, yeah. so easily, I'm not going to say it's super easy, but at least we know as writers, like, okay, this comes natural for me. And I absolutely come to life and I'm very passionate about it. I think yeah. the only thing that I, that I absolutely adore about you is that, you know, in my coaching sessions, I talk to the authors, like the best selling book can sit in a box. And with you, you know that you've got to be at all the places you possibly can to okay. make sure that, okay, hey, here's what I'm doing. This is what I'm passionate about. And I've done the same thing. I've checked all the boxes with you, craft fairs, you know, I also think TV, radio, bloggers, podcasts, yeah. anywhere that you can get the message out. And the other big thing too, I don't know if you're doing this, is that I always felt like part of the proceeds can go back to a voice, you know, someone that doesn't have a voice for themselves. And that's how we could speak as authors. So I don't know if you're involved in any of that with your books at all, or what, what do you do with that? Are you? Part yes. Of so as um, my books both pertain to schools, usually once a year, I will um, do kind of like a donation drive where I ask people to donate books to my classrooms or to classrooms that I know that are in need. Or if they know of someone that specifically a book impacts, they can sponsor a student and I provide my books to those students. So it's no, really kind of a give back it. opportunity um, for people to feel involved and my messages to get out. Well, I think a lot of people don't understand this either because they're not in the schools, but a lot of the teachers are responsible for school supplies. Yes. Including books. Absolutely. My, my cousin does the same thing. She's like, I need to buy all these things for my school. I'm like, well, oh, you don't even have a salary that wraps around that type. Right. You know, so it's like, you're kind of doing the Lord's work there, but you know, yeah. but, it, but it's important to, to, so that if anyone wants to say to you, you know, Maria, how can I help? I always say that too. Hey, donate to our local library, donate to our, our classrooms because teachers are always looking for new material every yeah. year for, for their students. So I think that's great that you're doing that. I think a lot of our, our authors here at Halo kind of, we have this umbrella, right? Hence the name Halo. But we we want to to give, to give to the community, not only our, our voice and our messages, but giving back. I think that's a, a big thing, a big circle, a big tribe that we have uh, working yeah. together. Have, have you used, I know I'm going to, I want to add on this too, as she mentioned, you know, she, she was, someone told her about us. And then Maria's a big fan of ours, which she's brought three authors to us and they just are amazing stories as well. I think we use Maria as a scout because <laughs> we don't publish everything that, that comes through here and we're very selective. And so I'm super happy that they're sharing the same experience that you've had. So yeah. I wanna, you know, obviously publicly thank you for those referrals. Have you, have you at all used um, AI since we've been- Love AI. Anybody, I was so opposed to it, I'm not gonna lie. No shame in the I was so close. I'm, like, writer. I'm, not, I'm not using AI. I'm not going to be that person. And then I think my mom had told me like, you should just try it. And I was like, fine. And I did. And to be able to create a post or a message where you can just type in everything about your book and have it create a, hey, buy my book. It's the holidays. Or this is the messages of my book takes your words and just elevates it. It is so great for branding and for promoting. I... I'm like, well, this is great. Because when you're first starting off, you have no idea what you're doing. If I would have known that when I published my first book, I can't even, I don't even know. I know. And I'm just going to say this. I, you know, as writers, I'm sure you're going to agree with me when, when I say this to you. It's not fair. We don't publish it. And I will never publish an AI story. All it right. has to be written by a human being. But if yes. you want to use, you know, to create the about the author, about the book, or like you had said, yes. social media content, Kudos Perfect. to you because it literally sl slices out a good two, three hours of marketing yeah. time to write, 
seconds, which you could be thinking, how can I yeah. talk about myself for the holidays or is yeah. the word about the message? So I wanted to ask you about that as well, because it's yeah. coming in and it's coming in fast. And a lot of my authors are using it as well for cover letters to get into being a uh, guest on a podcast to blog, yeah. to name it. So it writes letters, it writes so many things, content for marketing. So mm -hmm. no one can say, well, I don't know how to market my book anymore. Not when you have that genius of a tool yes. to use. And, and then going back to some of the other, you know, questions you had you wanted me to, to cover today, you had said, you know, how do you envision parents and educators using these books to spark conversations with children about their own dreams and challenges and successes? Yeah, I really hope that parents and teachers both can dig deep um, after reading the books and have meaningful conversations um, with the students and their children about really pursuing their dreams and ambitions. Um, I feel like often sometimes we limit ourselves as adults, but also children sometimes of how big they can dream. Um, I think the great thing about being a kid is that you have the opportunity to dream and think big. Um, and in both of my books, I just want um, the children to take away from them the opportunity that they can really chase after their dreams. Um, so I'm just hoping that educators and parents both can just sit down, have those meaningful conversations, and maybe even reflect themselves and be like, well, why haven't I written the book? Or why haven't I gone back to college or run the 5K? Like, I really hope it just sparks um, and ignites other people to chase after their dreams. Um, so I just hope those meaningful conversations come from that. I think that's important too, just based on, you know, knowing as a, as an author, you're, you're bringing in a series now and you're looking and you study too. You're thinking, okay, this is what happened with this book. This is what happened, happening with, this is what's happening with this book that I'm publishing. So, so how do you feel now? Like, is there a third book that you're thinking about and a direction you might take on that? How, how are you thinking about Great question. I get that a lot. Everybody's like, when's the next book coming out? <laughs> um, as of right now, I don't have any in the works, um, but I definitely have the aspiration to do another one. I can say I've been thinking more and more about it lately. Um, life has been super busy as I am now a recent um, new educator, um, taking a lot on in life, just got engaged. So planning a wedding, all of the things. Oh my goodness, congratulations. Um, thank you. Um, so a lot of things are going on in my personal life, but definitely can see myself um, publishing maybe another children's book or a novel, something of the sorts in the future. Definitely broadening her, my horizons in writing. Um, it's something that I love to do. And after publishing, um, the feeling that you get when somebody comes up to you and tells you this book really inspired me or this book really connected someone and it impacts them. It just makes you want to write another one. So absolutely. Yeah. You, when you're, when you have, when you're that talented, you want to keep going with your series. Have you submitted to any book awards yet? Yeah. So field day for Eugene actually won the purple dragonfly award. Um, it won it a few months actually after it came out. So that is now an award-winning book. Good. And so here's another question I like to ask authors. When was that? And if you can remember this, because I know it was a few years ago, yeah. but what was it like to read out loud your story for the first time in front of an audience of children? It was breathtaking. It was such a um, humbling moment, but also such a, um, I just felt so blessed, I guess you could say. Um, I remember the day that they came in the mail, my hard copy, I actually got to hold it in my hand. I remember sobbing in my living room, like, I can't believe I'm actually I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did this. Um, and I remember my first school program, I was terrified. Um, but I just felt so confident getting up there as well, kind of hand in hand. Um, so confident just being able to share my story and know that these were my words and this was my message. And the feedback that I received and my community that rallied behind me um, was just absolutely fantastic. It was a moment that I'll never forget. So in asking you how it's changed your life today, being an author versus before and not, not being one, how, how do you feel now? It is, it takes you to the next level, I guess. You just view yourself, I feel, differently as well when you feel like you've accomplished something so significant in life. Um, I feel like it kind of elevates who you are. Um, so for myself, definitely having being a teacher, um, soon to be wife, and then now being an author, I feel like it's another title that I get to wear with honor. Yeah. Can you imagine the day when you're sitting down reading your children's book to your child? I dedicated my first book to my niece and every time I see her hold it or want to read a bedtime story, I'm just like, oh my goodness, like this is why I did what I did. So awesome. You know, it takes a lot 
to believe in ourselves, like you say, I mean, these are your messages, right? But the other thing is, if you had to reflect back to someone in your life that if you didn't have that person, maybe you wouldn't have done it. Who, who's been like your cheerleader? Is there someone you want to just think out loud and say, hey, I'm I'm here mm -hmm. because of you, because of this? Who is there someone that you think of at the top of your head? That you Definitely. Don't have? When I had first published my books, my parents were my all or nothing. They were the ones rooting me on. They're the ones that are like, you want to what? Let's go for it. Let's take the challenge. Um, they were behind me 100%. And now my significant other is right there with me as well. Um, but at the time of publishing both my books, my parents were there every step of the way from throwing my book, la book launch parties to, you know, hopping into the car with me to drive two hours to an event. So they really were there for it all. Yeah, all of it. You needed them. I, I, I asked that. That was actually a rhetorical question because yes. I believe in our author meetings when we met, your mom was always a part of those meetings. Yes. She was always on the other side of the screen. So <laughs> she was always so excited and just so supportive. Um, yeah. And my dad like, you got it. Yeah, that sounds great, but definitely there to support. And I think too, Maria, when you talk about believing in ourselves, you know, it does, it's, it's big that we have that tool, that we have that belief system. But, you know, it really is important to surround ourselves with people that help us to believe in our dreams, because there is always these anchors in our life that push us to believing and taking the risk. <laughs> so so I think it's important. And that's why, you know, when we reflect back into where I'm at today and I look back and think, wow, if all those special people were not at those pivotal points in my life, maybe I wouldn't be sitting here interviewing you today. So I think it's really important that that you give kudos to your parents because they really, yeah. they really did support you. I know they do and everything you do. Yeah. It's actually so funny. Um, there was an event that I was going to go to for my book and I was like, oh, I'm not really sure. It was like a laugh minute event. They had contacted me like, hey, could you come? And I was like, this is like two days away. And my mom was like, you should just go. And that is actually where I met my soon to be husband. So you just got to put yourself out there. Yeah. So yeah, we actually so meet each other, but I'm like, here I am author of two books. And I, if I wouldn't have gone to this book event, I wouldn't have read met him. Did so, he buy a book? He did. His mom actually bought both of my books that day. So that's yeah. beautiful. So at your wedding, you should yes. have those out that you autographed them the day you yeah. met them. Please. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah. You're yes. standing at your wedding first and you'll be the first ever, right? So doing a book standing at the wedding, right? Yes. At my <laughs> wedding. Bring your copies. Is there anything else that we didn't cover that you'd like to uh, share with the listeners? today in our I would just say I always tell people this cuz everybody's like well what do I do if I want to become an author I would just say start to write down your ideas even if you're like it's never going to happen write it down start the process it's fun for you it could be a great hobby and then reach out to Halo and if you think it's something that you really want to pursue talk with Lisa talk with the team and get something set in place and if you're like it's not for me then that's fine too but you're really never going to know unless you just try you have to try. Try. Read her books and she'll make sure that you do try it. So yeah. here are her books. You can find them on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Goodreads, Books a Million, everywhere around the world, 193 countries, 40,000 stores in the United States. Hopefully Target.com is even partnering with us now and they're going to start picking up more and more books. Maria, I mean this with all my heart. You have been a treasure to us as an author. It's an honor to have you now on my show as an author as we spoke years ago when you were just putting this whole thing together. And I, I just appreciate you, appreciate your messages, and you keep writing. We'll have you back on our show. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you're ready to publish your book, please submit your manuscript on halopublishing.com. Or you can download our free publishing guide to learn everything you need to know about the entire self-publishing process. Start writing your legacy today.